Hello and welcome to day one of boot camp. It is November, you guys, so <laughs> we are nearing the end of the year and command is getting more and more exciting. Um, due shortly, we will have the command app coming out. So look for classes on that starting in December. Um, and without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So today in day one of boot camp, we are going to cover just a broad overview of command number one. Number two, and most importantly to me, is the reason why, why are we using command? Why was it built for us by our company? And why should I be using it? And then we are going to move into contacts, an overview of the contacts applet, adding contacts, and then smart plans that we can put our contacts on. And tomorrow we will be covering opportunities, which is also known as your transactions and how we manage those in command. So now that we've covered what we're going over today, does anybody have any questions before we get started? Good, good. I'm good. Awesome. All right. So looking at the strategic model for lead generation in our Millionaire Real Estate Agent book, if you guys have not started reading The Millionaire Real Estate Agent, I highly recommend that you do. Um, I keep this on my desk. I work from it daily. And my goal is to always read through it from beginning to end at least once per year. But that doesn't mean that I don't revisit pages. And this one especially, this is a great visual to always keep in mind in your daily activities what your goal is as a real estate agent. So while we do go to pre-licensing to get our real estate license and become provisional brokers, and then we go through and we get our post-licensing done so that we can become full brokers, um, one of the things that you don't learn in those classes is actually how to be a real estate agent. You learn legalities, you learn forms, um, rules, laws, regulations, all those kind of things that we do have to know, but how do we actually practice real estate, right? That's the question. So what they don't tell you in that class is your number one job in real estate is lead generation. So most of the Keller Williams classes you come to if you stopped paying attention and somebody asked you a question and you looked up, lead generation is about 80% of the answer most of the time. So looking at the lead generating model here, our goal is to take everybody from the outer circles of the lead generation model and move them into the center to our allied resources or our bullseye right there in the center. So let's move outwards. So from our allied resources, those are our one-on-one -on -one cheerleaders. Um, they will tell everybody that their friend, their family member, their wife, their spouse, their partner, is in real estate. So you want to get as many allied resources on your side as possible. Those people that are just gonna shout your name from the rooftop, as soon as they hear the word real estate or anything related to real estate, your name is going to come out of their mouth. So we want as many of those around as possible. So the next ring of our circle is our MET group. So these are the people that we know. Um, don't just think about friends, family, um, previous co-workers, all of those are great, but think beyond that. Who is your dry cleaner? What businesses do you patron on a regular basis? Who cuts your grass? Who put your roof on your house, right? All of these people are people that we know and people that have the potential to give us the opportunity to help themselves, their family members, their friends and neighbors buy, sell, invest in real estate and make their real estate dreams come true. So consider that your MET group. Your entire MET group, one of your main goals when you get started using command is to get that MET group into your command database. Our database is our data bank through the words of Jason Abrams. Um, and the way that we need to think about our data bank is that we are going to make frequent deposits by way of conversations, offering value to the people that we know. And as we make these frequent deposits, eventually we're going to make a withdrawal in the form of a transaction. So 
So think about your database that way. If you don't feed it and grow it every day, then you will not get the full benefits of your data bank, right? So think about it that way. So if you take nothing else away from this week, take this away. Get your contacts that you know into command, right? Number one. So next up is our target group of haven't met. We can also address this through command, through the use of social media posts, Facebook ads, Instagram ads. So this is a targeted group of people that may have the potential to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, and we haven't met them yet. So we need to put ourselves out there so that we can meet them and help them and their families realize their real estate dreams. And then the very outer circle is the general public of people that we haven't met, also great people to know, right? So the more people that we know and that we can put into the top of our sales funnel, the more families that we have helped can come out from the bottom. And that is the way that I look at our sales. I really look at it as families and people that we've helped realize their real estate dreams. So when you get bogged down in the minutia of real estate, really take the time to remember that you are truly helping families with their biggest investment. And that will help you push through to your next task. So let's go ahead. If anybody does, do you have any questions on the strategic lead generation model? That is page 137 in your Millionaire Real Estate Agent book. Pretty good. Great. Let's move forward. So let's talk about this. Why is it so important, Monica, for me to put all of my people into my command database and communicate with them with frequency and intensity? This is why, right here. This is a study that we get every year from the National Association of Realtors. It's called the Generational Trends Report, and this one came out in March of 2021. So number one, how did buyers find their real estate agent? referred by a friend, neighbor, or relative. 40% of all buyers, 40%. So if you are not telling your story to everybody that you know with frequency and intensity, they will forget. And I always like to chime in here with a story. My cousin probably is like, can you stop telling that story now? Um, but it really does drive this point home. Um, I have a huge family here in Winston-Salem, and I don't see them that often, mostly at Thanksgiving and Christmas, which we're right around the corner from. Um, and so I'm at Thanksgiving. I'd say this was about seven years ago. I don't act actively sell or help people purchase any longer. Um, I just handle referrals. But at the time, I was selling houses. And I'm in the line, you know, the line at your Thanksgiving and we're in my cousin's kitchen and I hear my other cousin behind me say, yeah, and mom just got to close on her house last week. She was so excited to get moved in before Thanksgiving. I was like, and I spun around in the line and he says, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I completely forgot. I completely forgot that you sold houses or I would have had mom work with you. <laughs> but whose fault was that? It was not my cousin's fault. It was my fault because the other 10 months out of the year that aren't the month of Thanksgiving and Christmas, I didn't really get to talk to my cousins that frequently. So he just forgot. So when he's married to my cousin, so, you know, his mom wasn't my actual aunt, but he just forgot. And so that is one of the main reasons that it is so important to get your people into this database. So most real estate agents, I'll be quite frank with you that are not Keller Williams agents, that is, don't really actively maintain a database. And that is a bad, bad loss. It is so important. I cannot stress the, the importance of this um, database philosophy to you enough. So look at that. 40% of buyers, of all buyers, referred by friend, family, or relative, right? Or neighbor. Um, and look at the statistics, the 22 to 30 age range at 52%, much higher than everyone else. And that is the upcoming market, right? These are the people that are really looking to buy, sell, and invest in real estate right now. So if you're not getting in front of them this way, you're missing out on half of the market. 
So definitely keep that in mind when you are working in your command database. So same thing, this is on the listing side. Method used to find real estate agent, referred by friend, neighbor, or relative, 41% of all sellers, 41%. It's a huge number, right? Um, and then this one is important too. The number of real estate agents interviewed, right? One, 73% of all buyers only interviewed one real estate agent. So what does that tell us? They more than likely took the first person that they talked to, right? And that person needs to be you, not anybody else. Don't let anybody else get that number one slot. Look at the drastic shift down to two agents from 73% to 16%. So that lets us know that we need to make sure that we tell people we are here to help them. Same thing on the listing side, 77% of all, seller, all sellers only contacted one agent. So don't let the fact that you're a new agent, don't let the fact that you don't have a lot of experience stop you from telling your story and reaching out to people, right? We are here for you. We give you the tools and models and systems to make your seller's life easier. So just keep that in mind. Agents' honesty and trustworthiness is number one reason when they're choosing their agent. So just remember that. Yes, experience is number two, but number one is honesty and trustworthiness. So get yourself and put yourself out there, right? Same thing, honesty and integrity, right? Knowledge of the purchase process, we can teach you that, right? We can definitely teach you that. And then would a buyer use their real estate agent again? This is an important number because 76% of all buyers say yes, but what percentage of buyers actually do recommend their agent? Sellers, 74% say yes, but then look at this. How many times did a buyer recommend their agent? None, 34%, they never recommended their agent. Now, is that the buyer's fault or the agent's fault? 100% the agent's fault, just like my story, right? So once you close a buyer, that is not where your story ends with that buyer. We are going to discuss the infinite loop sales model here um, in the next few slides, and they really show the importance. Same thing with the sellers, how many sellers actually recommended their agent. Again, 33% of all sellers said they did not, right? So let's talk about this infinite loop sales model. So this is the lead generation model from what will be the Millionaire Real Estate Agent 2, which is yet to be released, but hopefully it is coming soon. So what you can see here in the lead generation model is all of the teal or blue um, words that you see sprinkled throughout there are pieces of the command system. So the lead generation model hasn't changed. You drop as many people as you can into the top of the funnel. You get less than that in sales out at the bottom of the funnel. All this is showing you is where does command fit into this lead generation model. And you see my big red arrow pointing to the arrow that goes from closed back up to the top of the funnel. Why? Because Three to seven years is the life cycle from when a person buys a house until when they purchase their next house. So the traditional sales cycle looks like this, like a roller coaster. And when you're at the top of the peak, there is a 100% chance that you are going to get a commission off of this buyer and or seller. And then the very next day, they drop to the bottom and you're at about a 0% chance and you've got a three to seven, sometimes 10 year climb back up to the top of the peak. Throughout that time, you cannot stop talking to your people. I was notoriously bad for this. I would close them. Thank you. So glad that you got your new home. Here's your closing gift. And that was it. They usually did not hear from me anymore. That is a bad, bad real estate agent. Do not be like me in that regard. Definitely take all of this into consideration. And this is where some smart plans are going to come into play. So we have our contacts in the system. And 
we drop them in. Where did we get the contacts in the first place? Either they were from our sphere of influence or we do prospecting and marketing. And you see where all of the pieces of command fit into that. So campaigns, paid, paid ads, emails, direct mail, social posts, your website, referrals, designs are where you can make all kinds of beautiful marketing and we'll discuss designs on Thursday. But we take all of these things and we drop them into the top of the funnel. So that's our little lead generation portion. You can see that notated over here on the left hand side. Once we capture these contacts into our system, they are either leads. These are where we were one way offering services to these people because we heard that they were looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, and we got one piece of their contact information, and we are offering to help them with that, right? The other side of that is contacts. So these don't have to be people that are necessarily looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate right now, but they're people that we know. We have them in our database, and we are going to continually offer them value and touch programs throughout the entire year. So hopefully if they don't hear about, or if they don't need to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, they know someone who does, and they are going to recommend you for that purpose. So I'm going to turn to page 187 of the Millionaire Real Estate Agent. And this is where we're talking about our met database versus our haven't met database. The ratio of conversion for your met database, right? is a 12 to two ratio. And the reason we call this a 12 to two ratio in lieu of a one to six is because for every 12 contacts in your MET database, people that you know, for every 12 contacts, you should be able to get two pieces of business per year, one from them and one from the um, friends, families, and neighbors that they know, coworkers, et cetera. Right, so 12 to two. So think about that for every 12 contacts, two um, pieces of business. So our goal is going to be to get 300 contacts into your command database that you are having regular communication with. On the opposite side, the haven't met database has a 50 to one ratio, 50 to one. We've got some people popping into the waiting room, so please excuse me looking away. Got them popping in here, make sure that they get in. So again, we are on page 187 of the Millionaire Real Estate Agent, and we are looking at our MET database with a ratio of 12 to two, 12 to two, and our not MET ratio of 50 to one, right? So that shows you how important it is to get your contacts into command. All right, awesome. So let's talk about this infinite sales model and what this means, the infinite loop sales model. So most of you probably came from another line of work or maybe your dual career and you're still in that other line of work, right? And that's okay. We will, we will get you transitioned into the wild world of real estate before you know it. But let's say that you let a previous coworker know that you're an agent, okay? So, hey, Shelby, I used to work with you and I just wanted to let you know that I have joined Keller Williams as a real estate agent and I am here if you need any assistance at all in buying, selling, or investing in real estate or if you need anything vendor related, if you're looking for a landscaper or a roofer, or anything like that. So we have lots of ways that we can reach out to them. Plus we can put them on smart plans. So smart plans are drip campaigns. And we're gonna talk about those in the second half of today's class. The easiest one and what I want you to focus on the most for now is the monthly neighborhood nurture. And so we'll talk about that in the second half of the class. There's also a birthday smart plan and a quarterly call smart plan. Because for every person in our data bank, remember our goal is to get 300 in there. For every person in our data bank, we should be talking to all of them voice to voice once per quarter, okay? So the quarterly call smart plan is going to task you 
to call all of those people once every 90 days, okay? So we've let this previous coworker we know that you're an agent. You've put them on a monthly neighborhood nurture smart plan. You've put them on the birthday smart plan. So you're calling to tell them happy birthday, telling them happy birthday on Facebook. And then your quarterly call plan, you're calling them at least once every 90 days. So through that frequency and intensity of communication, they end up getting a promotion at work. And the first thing they think is, I want to go buy my, my starter home. And the first person they think of is you. And remember, what was it? 76% approximately between buyers and sellers only interviewed one agent. So you want to be that number one position, right? So they get that promotion. They call you to help them purchase their first home. You do a bang up job during this time. Great communication building up that relationship. That is so important in real estate. Relationships are our cornerstone of our business. So continue to build up that relationship and then you're going to close that transaction, but we are not going to stop there. Here's where this big red arrow pointing to this arrow comes into play. We have now closed this transaction we're going to bring those folks back up to the top and continue our interactive and value-based touch programs. Hey, Thanksgiving's coming up. Thank you so much for being my client in 2021. I have a pie for you to pick up my, at my office anytime on Thursday between one and five o'clock, right? That's an example of something that you could do for them. You're going to be sending them home anniversary cards. You're going to put their new neighborhood into their monthly neighborhood nurture, invite them to your client appreciation events, send them your newsletter, send them any email drip campaigns that you've chosen to get set up and continue with that birthday and quarterly call smart plan that you have them on. And so then what happens is their neighbor says, oh my gosh, I got a promotion and I'm moving to Colorado, but I need to sell my house. And they're like, I've got the perfect person to help you sell your home. Please allow me to connect you with my agent, Julie. We're going to use Julie, right? And so there you go. Now you've sold them their home and they've now sent you a referral of their friend. So now you're going to send that contact a thank you card for that referral. And maybe you'll pop by their home with a gift of some, some sort, right? And so then maybe when you help them buy their first um, home, the inspector said, hey, you've only got about five years of usable life left on this roof. Great. Would you like me to remind you in three years that it is time to start talking to roofers and getting um, some bids into place to get you a new roof? And they're like, well, of course, I would like for you to remind me of that. So guess what? In three years, you need to remind them you can put that in command and it will task you to do that at that point. But don't forget to do it because I can tell you this, it will make that person feel very special if you call them three years after they close and say, hey, don't forget, um, we talked about that you only had five years of life left on that roof. So let's start getting an idea about getting you connected with some vendors and get an idea of the cost estimate for you there. That's going to make them feel really important, right? So now they have a baby and they call you because of course you're the first person they think of and they're ready to buy that move up home with some more space for them and their growing family. So you've now gotten three pieces of business at minimum out of this one contact, right? So then they're raising their wonderful children in the home that you helped them buy. And maybe you got two sides because you listed their starter home, helped them buy their new home, right? You could have even gotten three sides if you bought the brought, brought the buyer. Um, so then they get another promotion at work and they call you to get that vacation home. They always wanted at Carolina Beach. And you're like, I am happy to help you with that. Let me connect you with my good friend, Chris Cox, down in the Wilmington Market Center. And we will get you moving to your Carolina Beach dream home, right? So now you've gotten a referral for their vacation home from them. And that cycle can continue on and on and on, right? So that is why this is called the infinite loop sales cycle. So does anybody have any questions on this piece? How we do it? Everybody feeling good? Welcome to those of you that came in a little bit late. 
Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them into the chat or please feel free to unmute yourself and ask any questions that you may have. Okay. All right. So this is a brief video on how command was built. So we've talked a lot about the why. We've talked about how important it is for you to stay in contact with the people you know and everyone who you meet, you need to add them to your command database as well and stay in contact with those folks. And so this is a little bit about how command was built by our company, by our agents, and we own it and nobody can have the data but us because we all know that data is the hottest commodity on the market right now. So I'm gonna let you guys watch this video and then we're going to actually go into command and take a look at contacts. Companies are nothing oh, good. more than people. Oh. People create everything Sorry. inside an organization. And what's going to make us better in the long term is the way that our people think. Our goal is to tap the way people think and put it to use for everybody. Keller Williams is going to listen to what their agents want for tech. To break and rebuild the entire command system, which is what we call the lab process. Saying, okay, tell us what works, tell us what doesn't. There were a lot of, can we do this, can we do that? The answer is always going to be yes. I feel like I designed it. I really want to show you some updates and products, mostly command. Our agents can be smarter. I'm not doing multiple data entry and things aren't falling through the cracks. They're all in one place. Now we can focus on the relationship with the clients. I like to call it high tech and high touch. We're creating the industry's first innovation partnership with all of the agents out there. I feel like I'm on the cutting edge of my profession. This is for the agents. This is for the people that are actually doing the work on a daily basis. They invest in not just the technology, but also in the people in the company. Command makes my life easy. So when people say you can't build software, well, actually we can, and we actually are. All right, Gary. Gary, always coming with the inspiration. All right. so. Without further ado, this leads us into our talk about contacts. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing this PowerPoint presentation. And we are gonna move into Google Chrome. So if you are an Apple user, that is okay. I'm not saying you cannot use command in Safari, what I am saying is that you are, if you were ever in command and you're in Safari or you're on a Windows computer and you're in Microsoft Edge or Firefox or any of these other um, web browsers, that is just fine. But if you experience any issues, the best thing for you to do is install Google Chrome. So Google just happens to be what the entire Internet is moving towards being built upon. So um best practice is to use google chrome I'm not saying you can't use others i'm just telling you best practices all right and if you ever need help installing google chrome please do not hesitate to reach out to me and i'm happy to help you with that so then we are going to not navigate to agent.kw.com again that is agent.kw.com that is where we go to log into command and i do recommend that you bookmark it like i have up here on your screen It'll make it a lot easier for you when you need to get into the system, if you can just reach over and click that button. All right. So brief overview, this is your dashboard. It is fully customizable. So you can see I have my tasks at the top. I have my product updates at the top on my right hand side and then my design updates, my database health score. And you're like, Monica, what is that? That means that the healthier your database is, the more beneficial it's going to be to you and to your consumers, right? So your goal is to get as many phone numbers, email addresses, physical addresses and neighborhoods. 
because we are residential real estate agents. And if we don't know where someone lives, it's very hard for us to offer them hyper local pieces of value, whether that's through emails or social posts or chats on the phone. Um, it is really important for us to know where our folks live. So don't only make it your goal to get 300 contacts into your command database, but make it your goal to get 300 really great contacts into your database. I would much rather you guys have a um, hundred that have phone numbers, emails, home addresses, and their neighborhood selected than I would for you to have 300 that are just their phone number. You're just gonna be able to get so much more out of this system that way. Um, so definitely make that your goal and your database health score can show you that here. You can compare yourself to other agents in your market center. You can compare yourself to other agents in the state, all agents, agents in different production brackets. So if you're a super competitive person like I am, then you have the opportunity to compare your database health score to others and give yourself that extra motivation to get your people in there with good information. You have recent leads also showing up here. You have your goals section showing up right here and your notepad. And you can see your customized button up here in the upper right corner. You can choose, say, to take that notepad off and maybe you wanna put your goals front and center to get you going for the new year. Then you can click apply and that will alternate your dashboard here to put your goals at the top and you will see my notes no longer exist at the bottom. So if you have any questions about that, please feel free to ask them now. Pretty good. Oh, got somebody in the chat. Is there a way to set up our task to email us prior to a due date? Janet, that is a great question. And the answer is not quite at this time. However, with the release of the command app, I'm hoping for November, um, we will definitely have it out by December and there will be training on that. You will actually get push notifications on your phone um, as well as your notifications in command. So one of the things about using a system like this, any system like this, I used to use Top Producer at one point in time and an another point in time I used one called Z57. I've also used Brivity, is that you need to... Um, be in this system. Now we know we can't, you can't be in here all day long, right? Because you have to be out showing property, going on listing appointments, doing your lead generation activities. Um, but do make it a habit to at least get in here first thing in the morning. Hopefully when you're doing your lead generating calls, you're doing it from command and taking notes on your contacts. Um, then try a midday check-in and definitely one by the end of the day at minimum. Um, and then the command app is going to make a world of difference with that. But that's a great question. Keep those questions coming, you guys. Okay, any other questions? All right, good deal. So we are now going to move into our first applet on the left, which is contacts, okay? If you ever forget what these applets are, you can hover over the top and it will tell you what they are. You can also open the white KW on the red background in the upper left-hand corner, and that is gonna pop out the names of these applets, okay? So just try to get comfortable with these. And the way that I always talk about command is it's just like your phone. Your phone is a, is a technology platform. Command is a technology platform. These applets on the left-hand side are like the pre-installed apps that came on whatever your cell phone is, right? There are some apps that we're going to use a whole lot more than other ones, right? Um, this dashboard is our home screen. You know, we've got different pieces that we can move around and customize to our liking. And the most important things that you're gonna learn this week are gonna come today and tomorrow because they're the things that you have to do. You have to add your contacts into command in order to add your opportunity or your transactions into command, because that is where we check your compliance paperwork. And that is also where you request to get paid on an upcoming closing. So those are really the only things that you have to do in the system 
because that is the system that we use as your leadership team to check over your paperwork and to get you paid. Shy of that, those are the only things that you really have to do in here. Everything else is to help you grow your business. All wonderful things, but please don't let all of these pieces overwhelm you. This system has taken over 20 different platforms that we used to work in and combined them into one place. Um, for ease of use, for not having to duplicate or triplicate entry um, like we all used to have to do and have spreadsheets that, you know, connected this program to this program because none of the programs talk to one another. So just remember, the only thing you have to do in here is if you have somebody that's looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, you have to add their contact and you have to facilitate their transaction in this system. Other than that, you don't have to use any of it. Now, I hope that you want to use it to grow your business and help you become a tech-enabled agent, but I don't want the system to ever overwhelm you. I am here for you to answer your questions. Always feel free to shoot me a text message because most of the day I am in Zoom, um, but as soon as I close out my Zoom, the first thing I do is go through and check my text messages and make sure that I answer any of your questions as soon as I possibly can. I'm going to take this minute before we go into contacts and remind you guys too of kwtriadtech.com, which is the website that I've set up for you guys. So there's a lot of resources here, as well as where your boot camp videos are going to be at the end of this week. Um, I will add them at the end of each day. So you can see right now, October 2021, or over here on the left, if you click here, it's going to take you straight to a YouTube playlist for that specific month. So as of this afternoon, you will see October change over to November and you will see December's bootcamp dates show up here at the top. You are welcome to come to bootcamp as many times as you want. I have people that come every month. I have people that come to days one and two the first month and then they come to the rest of the days the next month. Whatever you guys need is completely up to you. I'm always here for you. I do intend to teach two classes every week um, that are not boot camp, and most weeks I do get to do that. Um, so the holidays pending, of course, November and December are a little bit off when it comes to that. Um, but you do see me regularly schedule content. If you ever want to just look at my calendar, both the Winston-Salem and the Greensboro Market Centers do have their own calendars. The one at the bottom of my website that says tech training calendar should look familiar to you because both market centers use this type of calendar, but this is only my classes. Just so you guys know, I know that we have lots of classes here at Keller Williams and they are all wonderful, but if you're ever looking for something that's just specifically by me, this is a nice clean place that you can come and check this out. You can click on the class in which you're interested and click share and push that straight to your calendar of choice, whether you're using Google, iCalendar, you wanna send yourself an email to remind yourself, um, you can share that class and it'll put it right on your calendar. Um, so don't forget that this website is here for you. I This is essentially a brain dump, right? Anything that people ask me, I have been in this business for 13 years. Um, I try to put links to it here. People ask me what I read a lot. So here are some of the books that I like to read uh, and reread, um, some digital resources, all kinds of stuff here for you guys. So just remember that this is here and you can also schedule one-on-ones with me. So I just wanna take a moment to show you that scheduling one-on-one -on -one is down there at the bottom and you can pick whether you want a 30 minute or a 15 minute meeting. I don't like to go any longer than that at one time because it can just be information overload. So just choose whichever one works better for you. So say you want a 30 minute, then you will see a schedule that opens up. Now, just because I have this calendar here does not mean that I don't want you to ask me questions throughout the day. You are welcome to text me at any point during the day and ask me questions. Um, and I will try to get back to you as soon as I possibly can with an answer. But what these are great for is say, you've never run a Facebook ad and you're like, okay, I feel like I've got my contacts down and, and I'm doing my thing, but now I think I'm ready to run a Facebook ad. I've looked through the instructions. I attended that day of boot camp, but now I just, I want to get it done and I want some guidance. 
that would be a great time to schedule one of these one-on-ones, right? Or if you needed to figure out um, a little extra help with um, DocuSign or DotLoop forms, that would be a great way to use this as well. So does anybody have any questions on your resources that are available to you from me? Okay. And then at the very tip top, answers.kw.com is a fantastic resource. So if you can't get to me, for example, this morning, I was taking my daughter to get a COVID test because she was coughing and not feeling very well, but she it was negative, thankfully. Um, but if you ever have a question about something and, and you can't get in touch with me at the time, say you wanted to um, do something with an opportunity and you couldn't get to me, I'm just going to look up opportunity. You have all of these articles. This is all about your transactions and your opportunities, management, docu signing, turning them in for compliance, dot loop questions. So there are lots of references here for you in case I cannot get to you in the time that you need me. All right, awesome. So let's move back to command now and we are going to move into contacts, one of my favorite pieces of command. Okay. So on my contacts dashboard, you are going to see a banner that says, welcome to the new contacts. We have separated your personal contacts from your team contacts and improved the functionality for both. So I just want you to keep this in mind. If you are on a team, that includes productivity coaching. Productivity coaching is considered a team in the command ecosystem you are going to have both your personal contacts and your team contacts, okay? So I wanna talk about this because I get asked these questions quite a bit, right? My best practice for you guys, best practice guidelines, if you're on a team and it is your person, your mother, your neighbor, your previous coworker, your brother, whoever it is, right? Be in your personal side of command. So in the upper right corner, you can see I'm in Monica Perry personal. I also have the option to be the team leader of, or the rainmaker of my team. And if you guys are on a team, a team member or the rainmaker of your team, depending on which you are. So I can toggle back and forth between both sides, right? Our contacts can only exist on one side of command. However, my best recommendation for you is to add your contacts to your personal side of command. So let's talk about adding contacts. You can add contacts one at a time, okay? We previously used something called PySync to sync our Google contacts or our iPhone contacts with command. That is going away. The whole company, PySync is shutting down in December. So what we are moving towards is API Nation. And starting the first week of December, I will be teaching classes on syncing your contacts with API Nation. As of right now, the only thing available with, with API Nation is Google Contacts and iPhone Contacts. So iPhone Contacts just got released last week. I wanna give it a minute to make sure that everything is working smoothly. And then that, that first probably week of December is when I'll start teaching you guys how to connect that way. But if you have specific questions on that now or want to try it out now, please feel free to ask. We also have the ability to import. So I want to move into a different account because my account, um, I am a labs advisor, just so you guys know. That means that I am in a group of people that gets early access to some pieces of command so that we can learn how to use them and test them out to make sure that they are ready to be released to the general population of Keller Williams. So I don't wanna confuse you. This is what you will see for now if you go to import a contact, okay? So let me be on the personal side. If you click this import button at the top, it is going to ask you to download the pre-made CSV or comma separated values file, and then upload your contacts into the command system. 
So don't use the spreadsheet that came out of um, your export of contacts from some other system. You want to just take the data from that um, spreadsheet that you downloaded and put it into this format. So I'm going to click the teal button that says download and I will let you take a look at what this spreadsheet looks like. The most important thing to remember with this spreadsheet is not to change any columns or rearrange anything or delete anything. Just leave everything as it is. If you don't have all of these pieces of information, that is okay. Just add the key pieces, which I'm going to show you here. So first name, last name, it's got full legal name, birthday, home anniversary. If you're an existing agent that's had um, previous clients, you can pop their home anniversary in here. This primary personal phone number is their main phone number in command. Okay. And this primary personal email is their main email in command, right? And then you keep moving across. You've got address. If they have a separate mailing address or a different address, maybe you have to mail themselves at their office for during the day. And then you're going to have system tags. These are tags that were already established by the system. So if they were a buyer before, you can put a Y in that column, vice versa for any of these other tags. For custom tags, these are tags that you want the system to create for you. You would just need to make sure that you separate them with a comma. So if these people are all the people that play basketball with one of my children and they're in my book club and they go to my church then I could add all three of those tags to this person upon import by separating them with a comma, okay? So does anybody have any questions on this spreadsheet? And if you ever want assistance with this, feel free to ask. Let me give you guys just a second. Just remember, don't delete any columns, don't delete any fields. And then you're gonna take that spreadsheet and upload it here. And then it will import all of those contacts into command, okay? Questions, good? Okay, great, just checking the chat. Where did you go to upload the spreadsheet? Great question. So we're in command, we're in contacts, We click the import button up here in the upper right. That is where we can download the, sorry, I wasn't in the personal side. That is where we can download the CSV file. And it's also where we upload it when it is complete. Okay. So once you had that completed, then you could just, grab it right here and then click import and it would import it into your command database. Great question. You're welcome. Okay, let me go back into my own account now. Now I will tell you, unless you're just really impeccable on keeping notes on your people on your phone, um, my preferred method, especially if you're a newer agent, is adding people in yourself um, because you're not always going to have their home address or maybe have their phone number, but you don't have their email or vice versa. Um, again, I would rather you guys have complete contacts in your system than, you know, contacts that just have an email or just have a phone number. Um, when they're people that you actually know. Now with a lead, right, that's what a lead is. It's a person that you heard some way might be interested in buying, sell, buying, selling, or investing in real estate, and you usually get one piece of contact information, an email or a phone number, and that's what a lead is. But for the people that you actually know, 
try to make sure that you're putting as much information in with them as you want. One of the favorite things I've heard said about this system is if you put junk in in any system, you're going to get junk out, right? So the better quality data that you put in, the better quality data the system is going to give you back. The system is powered by artificial intelligence and it is made to learn. So I'm no, I'm usually the outlier with my Android phone. Most of you probably have iPhones and you probably remember when you got your first iPhone that Siri was mm, not the best thing in the world, right? And as Siri learned, it got smarter, right? Because it's powered by artificial intelligence. And that is the same thing that is going to happen with this system. So the more data, the better data that we give the system, the more data and the better data that it's going to give us back as it grows. Okay. So adding a contact, we're going to click the blue, green, teal, whatever you want to call the color. Everybody sees it different on different computers. You're going to click the add contact button in the upper right corner. Okay. We have a spot to put in a full name. You can add a relationship. So one thing that I see a lot is people that have been in business before will put Jim and Jane Smith in the full name. Jim Smith gets his own contact and Jane Smith gets her own contact. So you could say Jim Smith is this contact and you're going to be adding the relationship of his spouse, Jane Smith. This is going to create her her own contact for you to go back later and add her cell phone and her email address to. Then you can put in Jim's primary email, primary phone number. We looked at those on that spreadsheet, right? Lead source. So lead sources were already pre-established in here. So you have some that are agent uh, allied resources. Baseball and basketball are huge pieces of me and my kid's life. So a lot of my business came from that. It was important enough for me that I wanted to add a custom lead source called baseball. So you can see this one was added by myself. I also used to belong to Business Networking International when I was selling. So I actually added that because that was one place that I did get quite a bit of business. But there are a lot in here that call in, open house, all that kind of stuff was already pre-installed. I added chamber meetings because I used to go to a lot of the chamber events. So you have some already there and you can add your own custom lead source. Um, tracking where you're getting your business and where you're getting your contacts is one of the best things that you can do for yourself because then you know what you should be doing more of. If you realize that 60% of your business is coming from your Business Networking International group, that is a good investment to keep moving with and try to grow even further, right? And then if you see that you're spending money for this certain thing and you're getting nothing back from it, that might be a place that you can save on your budget, right? So it's super important to track where we're getting our, our pieces of business from and our contacts. Um, so that being said, we have another button here where we can select from contacts. So remember when we referenced the lead generation model. And we wanted to get as many people as we can into our allied resources bullseye target in the center. Allied resources are when you be selecting the lead source as a contact. So say my brother who lives in Huntersville called me and said, hey, my friend from high school um, is looking to buy a house out in Quimmins. Can you help him out? And I'm like, sure, of course I can then the lead source for that piece of business becomes my brother. It wasn't an event, it was my brother. My brother gave me that piece of business, right? And so if I find out at the end of the year that Jane Smith that I just added was singing my praises and she got me three pieces of business in one year, I might want to get Jane Smith a really nice holiday gift. I don't know about you guys, but that is an important relationship that I want to continue to grow, right? So marking somebody as a lead source from a contact, that would be the point of that, okay? Marking them as a lead. So if you're adding your contacts into command just to communicate with them with frequency and intensity, that doesn't mean that they're a lead. That doesn't mean that they're looking to buy, sell, or invest now. But if my brother called me about that friend from high school and I was adding that friend, that friend is a lead because he said, I'm raising my hand 
for help with real estate. So that is when something becomes a lead and not just a contact, right? Adding them to your sales pipeline means that you're ready to go ahead and make them an opportunity and or a transaction, same interchangeable verbiage there. So that's what these check marks are for. And my favorite piece of this screen is tags. I cannot um, reiterate the importance of tagging and segmenting your database enough because you can see on my personal side of command in the upper right corner, it's a little grayed out right now. I have 1,286 contacts in here. So if I didn't have some way to sort these folks out or segment them down into groups, um, then I could potentially have a hot mess on my hand. So one of the ways that you can do this is through the use of tags, okay? So tags that existed in the system are gray. Let me find one. So like agent, buyer, seller, those already existed. Allied resource, they're gray. All these other tags that you see are tags that I have added. So there's basketball, baseball, um, different things that there's bought, right? I added broker because I'm usually segmenting you guys out, my agents, because you guys are my clients, right? Um, so you can see there, I have lots of tags in here, but it definitely makes it a lot easier for me when I need to, to cull through everybody to reach out to a certain set of people, right? So you can add as many tags as you want. So let me try to think of something I haven't done before. Um, little theater. Maybe I was part of little theater. And I know a lot of people from there, right? You can see as I begin to type it, it doesn't yet exist, okay? So, but if it's something that I need to tag people with a lot, I would like to go ahead and create that so I can use it for everybody moving forward and the person that I'm adding now. So I can go ahead and create this custom tag and I can go ahead and give it a color that is fitting for me. So some people have chosen to really get specific with this and say, you know, my sources are gonna be orange and this is gonna be this color and this is gonna be this color. So completely up to you. I'm just gonna pick orange for right now and click add. So now this tag, Little Theater, exists for this contact and any contact moving forward that I add into my system, I can use this tag. Okay, so any questions on this first initial piece? This covers the name of, of one relationship, the primary email, primary phone. Where did you get the contact? Are they a lead or adding to a sales pipeline? And your tags. Does anybody have any questions on this section? Very good. I'm going to click the add more information button and it's going to expand this contact. I can now open up additional contact information, right? And so now what is their preferred method of contact? Um, some of you in here have already been in classes with me and probably know that my preferred method of contact is a text message because I'm usually in Zoom. So it's very rare that I can answer my phone during the day. Um, so you might want to put that I prefer to be texted. So, you know, different people operate differently. Some people might not care if you call them on the phone if they prefer to be texted, but some people, maybe they have a super stressful job or specific things that they have to abide by at work and they have to be emailed. You can't call them during the day, right? So really try to take note of how your people want to be communicated with so that you can do that for them, right? Additional email and phone number. So maybe during the day they are at work and you have to email them at their work email and you have to call them on their work phone number. But then when they get off of work, you can call them on that personal cell phone and personal email. Then you have the option here to add some additional emails and phone numbers and even to take it a step further and add some more. Primary street address. This is populated by Google. So I get asked this question a lot too. I always try to touch on things I get asked a lot. If they are in a new construction home, there is a chance that that home's address does not yet exist in Google, okay? It does happen. It takes Google a minute to catch up on these new construction neighborhoods. 
got somebody in the waiting room there. There we go. Um, it does take Google a little bit of time to catch up. So if that is the case, you will not see that address populating. You will need to manually add that new construction address to the contact card. So if it's a buyer and you help them buy a new construction home, you may have to manually add that address. Otherwise, Google is going to populate. So if I begin to type, it's going to start giving me suggestions, right? And the one that I need is right here at the top. So I can just click it and it's going to pop that address right there for me, okay? All right, next up, Facebook URL. If you don't know what that means, it means that if you go to Facebook and you go to a person's profile, I'm just gonna go to my own. Okay. So when you're on my profile page, Go Cowboys, by the way, um, this URL up here is my Facebook URL. So if you wanted to connect me and my profile directly on Facebook, you would copy this and you could put it with Facebook as my Facebook URL, okay? You could also add Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Google Plus, Snapchat, Hows, link high five they're taking it back with myspace y'all url and a website um tiktok's not on here yet which needs to get added just saying but i digress this is going to be useful as this artificial intelligence grows so you can put as much or as little merit into it as you want to right now um, but you saw it's not a very difficult thing to grab so if you have the opportunity to do that please feel free to go ahead and do so and this street address that we've added here is going to come into play in a minute too. So any questions about the additional contact information section? Yes, Julie, I can. If you go to Facebook and you go to a person's profile, right? So you're in Facebook and you're like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look up my brother because it's his birthday. So we'll just look my brother up. So here's my brother. I'm on his personal profile page, right? This is just my brother's profile. Up here in the bar at the top, facebook.com forward slash whatever this person's profile is. My brother happens to be chris.perry.numbers, right? Then I can right click and click copy. Or if you're on a Windows, you can control C to copy. And I'm sure that there's a shortcut on a Mac, but I just don't know what it is. <laughs> so um, either way, you can just take that and then take it back into command and paste it into the box. Good questions. Anything else? All right, awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and collapse this additional contact information box and open up the about section, okay? This is where you have a chance to put somebody's legal name. So my brother goes by Chris Perry, but if he was gonna sign a document, he would need to sign it Christopher Perry. So I could put my brother's legal name here and that's what would populate into DocuSign. And I believe DotLoop will populate the legal name also for signatures, right? So that's definitely something to keep in mind. If you know somebody that goes by Mo, but their name's really Monica, or you know somebody who goes by, you know, Mike, but his name is really Michael. When he's signing a document, he needs to sign it Michael. So something to keep in mind there. The about section is also where you can give them their birthday, their home anniversary, any other relationships. So I believe you can add up to three. My philosophy with relationships, um, my kids are 13 and 16. They can't buy a house right now, right? I'm not going to create their own contact for them yet. I would actually use the custom fields to remember somebody's kid's name. However, if, if it was my mom that was your contact and I'm her daughter who is in her 40s and can purchase a home, then you may want to add me as a potential contact, right? So you'd want to have a contact for me, but have me connected to my mom. At that point, you could drop down and say it's her daughter and type the person's name in. And like I said, you can add up to three connections 
as far as relationship goes in the system, okay? And then company name. So for this one, any company that you add in here exists for you to use over and over and over again forever. So you can see I've already added like Baptist Hospital, right? Baptist Health, Baptist Hospital, Wake Forest Health, all of these already exist in here. Apple Inc. There's all kinds of different um, companies that are already in here. And once you add it in, it's there forever for you to use over and over. So if you know a lot of people that work at one of the hospitals or something to that effect, then you can add them in because that is yet another way that you can segment out your database, right? So any questions about the about section? Looking at the chat, good deal. All right. And last but definitely not least is our custom fields, which I just so happen to love. So we talked about when we were talking about the infinite sales loop, um, giving people a pie for Thanksgiving that were one of our previous customers. Well, if you want to really stand out, um, I shop at Costco. Costco pies are huge and they're really well priced and they're delicious. And I believe that they have apple and they have pumpkin, right? So this year you can say, hey, Miss Seller, that I just sold you your house. Thank you so much for, help, for allowing me to assist you with that. Uh, to show my gratitude, I would love for you to get to come by and pick up a pie from me next week on Tuesday. Would you prefer apple or would you prefer pumpkin? And then when she tells you which one she would prefer, you can come in here to custom fields and you could add favorite pie, right? I already have pie, so I can search it, favorite pie, and I can say that hers was apple. And so the next year at Thanksgiving, I don't need to ask her which type of pie that she wants to pick up. I can just say, I have your pie ready to pick up. Next Tuesday, your apple pie will be at my office ready for you to come by and grab. So that's a great example of a custom field that you can use. Um, whatever you can use to add value to your conversations when you're talking with somebody, pop it in here. Children's names. What college did they go to? Obviously, you've heard me talk a lot about sports, and that's because we play a lot of sports and watch a lot of sports. So I've added like favorite baseball teams and football teams and all these different teams that because I talk about that a lot. Um, favorite beverages, maybe they love Starbucks, maybe they love um, Rosé Prosecco, I don't know, right, so whatever their favorite beverages, great gift ideas for you, um, all different kinds of things that you can add in here, one of my most important ones is pet names, right, I also love my pets very, very much, and most people that have pets love their pets very much, so if you save Fido's name in your command database and you're going through and making your lead generation calls and you hear a bark bark in the background, you can ask them how little Fido is doing. And oh, won't they feel special when you remember their dog's name, right? Um, so I'm not just feeding you a line when I tell you that these things are important and make a huge difference. They really do make a huge difference. During COVID, when it first hit, um, one of the biggest things that we talked about was growing mind share now so that you can get your market share later because not a lot was happening right at March 2020 in the beginnings of COVID, but people got really intentional with making calls and talking to their people and checking on their people and growing their relationships and our business skyrocketed in the middle of a global pandemic. Our company's businesses skyrocketed right? So vice versa, we've had a lot of work done on this house, and I do share this house with my mom and my children as well. Um, we got a really bad storm about four weeks after we got this roof put on our house, and the roofer called us and said, I, I just wanted to check on you guys through that storm, make sure you don't see any damage. I'm going to drive by later this afternoon and check on your house. And that made my mom feel so special because I teach this stuff all the time. Sometimes I forget really the importance and the impact it can have on people. But she was just like, I couldn't believe that that guy called us to check and make sure we were okay after that storm. I mean, it just made her feel really, really grateful and thankful and special. 
So just remember stories like that when you're doing this for your own business, right? All right. So that takes us to the end of the contact card. Does anybody have any questions on the adding of the contact? Everybody feeling confident and good? Great. I'm gonna go ahead and click create on this contact. Okay. And now I'm gonna hearken back to that team individual aspect. We just added that contact under my individual side of command. If this person is going to buy, sell, or invest in real estate and you are on a team, chances are your team wants you to facilitate your transaction under their side of command, okay? But what I just did with Jim Smith when I added him in was put him under my side of command. So if I open up his contact card now, you're going to see the account is my account and Monica is the owner of the contact, okay? I could now hit these three dots. If you were just adding Jim to have conversations and track your conversations, you don't need to do this part yet. But if Jim says, I'm ready to buy a house, then you're gonna click these three dots and click change account, move Jim over to the team. I'm gonna change the account and I'm gonna switch myself over to my team account by clicking right there. So you saw, I'm gonna go back one step, I'm gonna switch back to my personal side. So once I'm looking for Jim Smith on my personal side, it says there's one contact in your team account which matches the search, okay? So I can switch to my team view and now I see Jim's contact, okay? So now let's look at the ownership account. It's being worked on under the team account. I, however, am still the owner of the contact. And I am the assignee and or the person that is working on the transaction on the team, okay? So this is best practice if you're on a team with your own personal contact. If it is a lead that came from lead generation activities of your team, it's going to be owned by your team. So if you facilitate the transaction and then you left the team a year later, that contact belongs to the team because they generated the lead. But your personal contacts, this way you maintain the ownership and you can move them to whichever account you need them to be in this way. Okay, any questions on that? Just wanted to make sure that I touched on that because I do get that question quite often. If you go to um, create an opportunity and you haven't moved it over, then your contact might not show up and you're like, but I know I added my contact, right? And that's why you have to switch them over to the team. So any questions on that before we continue? Awesome. About five more minutes, and I'm gonna give you guys a break and then we'll talk about smart plans. Okay. So here's Jim Smith that we just added. Okay. Jim Smith's health score is pretty low because I didn't add a phone number or an email because Jim is a fake person. Okay. But this is where his phone number and email would show up is up here. Remember, we added Jim's address. Our neighborhoods in command are powered by a company called Nextdoor. So if you're not familiar with Nextdoor, I do recommend that you go check it out later on today and see what it's all about. But what you will learn is that the neighborhoods that are in Nextdoor are established by someone who lives in that neighborhood, okay? They're established by somebody who actually lives in the neighborhood. Now we are partnering with Nextdoor at Keller Williams to work on the ability for us to create neighborhoods as agents, but we are not there yet, okay? So if you're in the middle of a city, like I'm in the middle of Winston-Salem, or if you're in the middle of Greensboro or Kernersville, or there's lots of neighborhoods established there. However, if you start moving out Yadkinville, Lexington, Davidson County, Brown Summit, some of those outlying areas, you might not see as many neighborhoods, 
Okay, so just keep that in mind. But the address that I did put in here was identified by next door as being in the neighborhood Old Sherwood Forest in Winston-Salem. So it's already assigned this primary neighborhood to this contact for Old Sherwood Forest. And so this is a little preview of what the neighborhood nurture smart plan that we're gonna talk about here in a minute is going to look like. I can click this preview in the lower right corner of this map, okay? When the email comes out that says, hey, Monica, here is your monthly neighborhood update. Here's what's happening in Old Sherwood Forest. It's going, I'm gonna click on it. It's gonna bring me to this page where I can see these pictures of the houses that are listed in the neighborhood. I can see the map. I can go through and look at neighborhood statistics and all this kind of stuff. And I will show you an actual live email like this when we go back and look at that. So I just wanted to show that to you. And then you can see all the other information that we put in to the contact. There's Jane Smith, his spouse, um, favorite pies down here. And on the right hand side is really great. This is our timeline. Okay. So timeline um, is going to show like, what have you done? Have you texted them? Have they texted you? Have you emailed them? Have they emailed you? Um, all the different things. You can add tasks. You can add activities that you had a conversation, that you spoke via text, that you sent them an email by clicking the add activity button right here. You can say, what was it? It was a call called Jim and Jane to say happy Thanksgiving and invite them to pick up their high Tuesday. What is it, 23rd? Yes. Okay. Tuesday, November 23rd for Thanksgiving for Turkey Day, right? So that's what Jim and I talked about and I can save it. And then I have my call recorded with Jim. I could also add down here an activity, a note or a calendar event, okay? So note, oh, let's see, Jim and Jane's son graduates in June. Keep this in mind if they want to downsize. Lifestyle things can make people make real estate decisions, right? Downsizing, upsizing, divorces, marriages, having children, children growing up and moving, deaths in the family, all these different kinds of things um, are important to keep up with. So you can add notes like that. Okay, any questions on that? Good. We can move over to opportunities. This is where you would create a transaction straight from the contact card. Tomorrow we'll look at opportunities in more detail. You can also click on the handshake and that's gonna take you to your opportunities dashboard where you can also create the transactions. This will show you any smart plans that you have this person put on or give you the ability to add them to a smart plan. Here's where you can manage their tasks. So maybe I'm gonna create a task. I'm gonna mark it as a call. I'm gonna call Jim. Don't forget to pick up your pie. Medium priority level. And I wanna make sure that I call him on the 22nd. I'm gonna make those calls maybe in the morning at 9 a.m. apply date and time and I'm gonna create that task. So now I have a task set to call Jim, right? Here's where I can filter through my notes. And I can also set up saved searches for my contacts, okay? 
So these saved searches are going to power your website and the mobile app that we share with our folks. So let's take a look at a quick save search. I can create a save search. I can search by neighborhood or zip code. For each search, I can only use one neighborhood or one zip code. So if Jim wanted to live in either 27104 or 27106, I need to set up a search for each one individually, okay? So I'm gonna say zip code 27104, choose it, okay? So maybe he wants uh, 300 to 350. And he wants three plus bedrooms, two plus bathrooms, doesn't care about the year build or square footage because they're probably going to be downsizing. Um, but he does want to pull. Then I can put pull and click enter. And now pull is part of my search criteria. So I've now set him up in 27104 for 300 to $350,000 for a three plus bedroom, two plus bathroom home with a swimming pool with no other parameters set. Okay. I click next. I give it a title, T71043, two, with pool. Okay. This would go to his email. I don't have an email added, so it's not going to let me. It's going to make me put his email address in before I save it. But you get to see, I can send instant emails. So as soon as something hits the market, as soon as a price drops on a property that fits this criteria, it is going to instantly notify Jim via email. I can set up a daily summary, a weekly summary, bi-weekly, or a monthly summary that sends out at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time, and the instant sends within 30 minutes of the change, whether it's a new listing or a price drop, okay? And then I can create that save search for Jim. I can't leave those emails on because it's uh, not going to let me because I don't have an email in for him. But nonetheless. Does anybody have any questions on setting up the save search? Good? Good. Okay. Great. All right. And last but not least, let's look at the overview of the contact screen. You can see how we added our contacts in. We have our, go ahead, Nisi. What you got, honey? Okay, over the weekend, I was trying to, um, I was looking in the command because I was going to go ahead and set up Christmas cards, but I didn't see any. Do we have that in command to set that type of um, smart plan up? So to send a Christmas card? Well, you know, to do the smart plan, like, you know, it, do, it does like the holidays, it will send out an um, email to the person. Yeah. With, um, and I didn't see anything for Christmas on there. Yeah, so we do um, have several Christmas, it, it's not a smart plan, but we do have like Christmas templates and stuff like that. Um, we'll look at designs and stuff like that on Thursday. Thursday, yes, Thursday. And I can reach out to you individually to show you how to do that. Before well, Okay, because I know I could do it like for the fourth and other holidays, but I didn't see anything for Christmas. Okay. Yeah, I'll show you exactly how to get that to that, honey. And we can all look that together on Thursday as well. Great questions, great questions. Okay, so contacts overview. Um, this is why tags are so important. I'm just going with one. I'm not throwing any shade to either one of my market centers. KW1 is just what I see first. If I click on this tag that says KW1, I'm only looking at my contacts that are tagged with the tag KW1. If I click on 2021, I'm only looking at my contacts that have the tag 2021. So you can see how valuable it is to be able to sort by these tags, right? I can also over here on the right hand side, right now I'm showing one through 50 of 50 contacts or of 67 contacts rather. I can show up to 100 contacts so that I can see all of them. Or if I was looking at a view that had many more like this one that's got 374 contacts, then I can show up to 500 so that I can see 
all 374 contacts that have that tag, right? So you can see how valuable the tags are. I can also customize these columns. So if I would rather see their phone number first, because I'm gonna make calls today, and then I wanna see their tags right behind their phone numbers, and then I wanna see the last time that I contacted them, then I can click apply. It's gonna reorder what I'm seeing on this home screen. Let that finish loading. There we go. And so now I see their primary phone number first, their tags here in the center, and the last time that I contacted them over here in the next column, like so, okay? And so if I wanted this view to be usable over and over again, I can come over here and click Create Smart View. And I can give it a name. It's my KW1 Call List. And you could do the same, okay? I could choose to set it as my default Smart View if I wanted to with, by clicking this box. And I can click Save, okay? So I've now saved KW1 Call List. And that's the Smart View I'm currently looking at. So tomorrow, if I come in here at nine to do my lead generating and I go into my contacts applet, I'm gonna to default to my all contacts view, which is where I usually am, smart view all contacts, but I can drop down and say smart view, KW1 call list, boom. It's gonna take me right back to that view where I can see all 374 people, their phone number, their tags, and the last time that I contacted them, right? So you can save as many smart views as you would like. You can reorganize your columns alphabetically. You can reorganize primary phone number. Maybe you're trying to find out who you don't have an email for because you want to put them on a monthly neighborhood nurture. You can organize by that email column. And then I can see who I don't have an email for by scrolling to the bottom, right? And seeing who doesn't have an email. So there's lots of ways that you can customize this to your liking and save the smart views. Also, if you don't like this list view, there is a comfort view right here with the boxes, like so. So you have a wider view of what these contacts are. And last but certainly not least, we can check the checkbox and do bulk actions. So we can add a note, we can archive people. We can add an activity. Maybe I sent all 374 of these people a Christmas card. Then I can add an activity that said that I did that, right? I could send all of them a text message. If I'm using Twilio, which is a, a bulk texting platform that we did, that is an additional cost. I could add a tag to all of these people. I could remove a tag from all of these people. Removing tags in bulk is a newer feature. I could add an email, add them to an email list if I was using MailChimp instead of Command Mail. We'll talk about that more on Thursday. I could share a copy of the contacts, mark them as a lead, unmark them as a lead, put all of them on a smart plan. So maybe that monthly neighborhood nurture, okay? And I could export them, export mailing labels or export mailing labels as a PDF I could also change that account. So if you're on a team and your Rainmaker wants all contacts to get moved over to the team, then you could bulk move your contacts over to your team as well. Okay, so those are all of your bulk items. Does anybody have any questions on contacts? Freddie feeling good? Nisi, is your hand still up from earlier? Do you have any question, honey? No questions here. All right, I'm gonna give you guys a three minute break and we're gonna come back and talk about smart plans. So I'll see you guys in just a minute. And here we go, welcome back. I hope you had a great comfort break. Okay, so we have talked the why behind command and we have talked contacts and adding our contacts and tagging them and how we can sort through them and do all kinds of great things here in the contacts applet. 
and we are going to move forward into a discussion about SMART plans. So the main SMART plan that I want you all to focus on during the beginnings of your command journey is the monthly neighborhood nurture and the birthday SMART plan. These are both very simple. They are set it and forget it type of SMART plans, right? Which is what we're looking for. We're looking for mass touches that we can do with minimum effort on our part. So the importance of adding that address and making sure that a neighborhood is established for that contact is so important for the monthly neighborhood nurture. So we took a quick look at what that looked like um, from the viewpoint of our consumer. I'm going to pop into a Gmail account here and show you a true example of one of these monthly neighborhood nurtures. Bear with me one second and I'll get this pulled up for you. Here we go. Okay. So when you put somebody on the monthly neighborhood nurture, you do have to make sure that you um, have a neighborhood established for the contact, right? That's the most important piece. And when you do, and then you add them to the SMART plan, they're going to get an email that looks like this, okay? So it's gonna be branded to you at the top. It's gonna to say neighborhood trends. You can add more than one neighborhood to the person. So maybe their dream is to own a house at Carolina Beach. They currently live in this neighborhood and they grew up in this neighborhood, right? So you can see I have three different neighborhoods added to this particular contact. You're not limited by MLSs, right? So you could add a neighborhood in San Antonio, Texas to this contact. That would be fine too, okay? So this is what the email looks like and they can click explore neighborhood. And it's going to take them to that preview page that I showed you guys from the contact card. Okay, here we go. So these are the houses available in this specific neighborhood that they clicked on. But you can see that this person has added some neighborhoods themselves. This is a neighborhood I added for them where they're currently living. I added this neighborhood for them because it's where they grew up. So they can look at what's happening in their hometown, right? And they added this neighborhood. And I was like, whoa, I saw that somebody added a neighborhood in San Antonio. So guess what I did? I called this contact and said, hey, I noticed you started looking at houses in San Antonio. You know, what's going on? Are you thinking about moving? Is it your job? And they're like, yeah, well, I just have a really big family that lives in San Antonio. So I thought maybe I would buy an investment property out there that I could use as an Airbnb. And then that way, when I travel out there, I can have a place to stay that I wanna stay in when I go out to that area. Guess what? I know a lot of great agents in San Antonio and I will be happy to connect you with one of them to help you find that Airbnb ready house in that area, right? So they can come through and add other neighborhoods themselves and you, can also add other neighborhoods for them. So maybe right now they're just a contact and you just put a couple of neighborhoods where they're currently living for them to look around. But now they're like, okay, I think I'm ready to buy a house, okay? Then you can go into their contact card and you can add some neighborhoods that they're interested in living in via the contact card and they can also add them for themselves here. So this is a great way to stay in touch with your people. It's just a once a month email. They can choose to click through it or not. And it's just a great tool for you guys to use. So let's talk about setting this up. Very little amount of setup. If you've never come into your Smart Plans applet, Smart Plans is our fourth applet on the left over here. Okay, remember we can click this and pop them out. Smart Plans, okay? When you first come in, if you've never been in here before, the first thing you're going to need to do is add some Smart Plans to your smart plan. So you can see the tab I'm under is my smart plan. I can also click on this library tab, okay? So under the library tab, we have some featured smart plans highlighted in blue up at the top. 
We also have the OG10 smart plans that Keller Williams provided to us when we got started. That includes the monthly neighborhood nurture. So you see we have a bi-weekly neighborhood nurture, an eight by eight new contact engagement, the quarterly call plan. Again, we should be calling our database. This is another one that's super great for you guys to use because it reminds you to call people every 90 days. We have a midterm nurture. Can scroll along, see the long-term nurture, the birthday smart plan, the monthly neighborhood nurture, and an open house follow-up smart plan here. So I do recommend that you go ahead and add smart plan, monthly neighborhood nurture. Just click the add button and you would click the download button. I already have the smart plan, so I can't download it, but you would click the download button. I recommend that you add this birthday smart plan and the quarterly call plan. Those are the first three that I recommend that you guys use, okay? Now there are tons more smart plans that exist in here. So these are top rated smart plans that other agents have built and published. And so if you get really passionate about smart plans, then you can come in here and build smart plans and you can publish them and let other people know that it's available for them to download and they can use it, okay? Um, and these are the newest released smart plans that you can look at down here too. And you can view the steps. So this one is a 2021 back to school. We'll just click view steps. All it is is an automated email. That's all that's in this smart plan. Looks like that's the same for the Halloween, a simple Thanksgiving email, right? Daylight savings time and all kinds. This 555 has always been super popular. So let's look at the steps here. I'm gonna click view steps. So it's a 90 day long smart plan. It's got seven steps and three touches, okay? So it's a phone call, a delay, a touch task that says to interact with them on social media, delay, touch task, write a handwritten note, delay, and then it repeats unlimited times. So this is how this agent chooses to interact with his database, right? And so if you like the idea of using this smart plan, you can just click add smart plan and it will put it right into your library, okay? Any questions about how you find a smart plan or add it to your library? Good, awesome. Okay, so that being said, now that we have the monthly neighborhood nurture smart plan, I'm gonna look it up. You can search, as you see, I've got a ton of smart plans. So I'll just look up the monthly neighborhood nurture here. I could choose to click add contacts right here. And I could select all of these contacts or I could select specific contacts. I could search for my contacts by tag if I had a specific set of tags that I wanted to start the smart plan for. So you can definitely do this, but you can see from this viewpoint, I can only see one through 20 of 1,289 contacts at one time, right? So while this might be good if you're just quickly adding somebody, that's fine. However, if you worked really diligently to get your 300 contacts in and get their home addresses in and make sure that they had a neighborhood established, and now you want to add all of those people to your smart plan because you finished it up, you can go back into your contacts. Okay. And I could say, okay, I want this tag. I just filtered. You could also click the filter button to search by different ways here. Or you can click on the tag itself and get that pared down list. And say I want to select all 50 of these people. Bulk action. Add to smart plan. Monthly neighborhood is what I'm searching. And there it is. I could click select. I could choose to start all of them on the smart plan today. 
I could choose to start all of them on the following date, right? A specific date, or I could stagger start them over the next few days. So the quarterly call plan, for example, if you're putting that into play for your database and you did add your 300 contacts, which is our goal, you don't want to start all 300 of those at one time because you're going to get 300 tasks that say call this person. And that would be quite overwhelming. So say that you wanted to call um, six a day, right? Then it's going to do six today, six tomorrow, six the next day so that it's not all at one time, right? So that's what the stagger start means. But you can add up to 500 people at one time to one smart plan by using this bulk action. So again, I'll just go back into all of my contacts and turn my filters off. There's my 1,289. And so I wanna show up to 500. So if I wanted to add all 500 people to my quarterly call plan, it takes it a minute to load when you're looking at 500, it's a lot of data. So if I wanna select all of these 500 people, select bulk action, add to smart plan, I can look for that quarterly call and select. So this is adding 500 people to this. Then I would definitely want to stagger start over the next few days in this instance. Right, so I don't want to get tasked to call all those people in one day, right? So does anybody have any questions on the plans that are already built for us and adding them and then putting people on them? Anybody? Good. We can also, from one specific contact, just open one up. There's the one we added earlier. So I could be in his contact if I just added him in and I got his neighborhood and I was like, I definitely want him on the monthly neighborhood nurture. Oops, got somebody in the waiting room. I definitely want this guy on my monthly neighborhood nurture. Then I can just, once I've added him and I have his neighborhood and his email address established, then I could just go smart plan, add to smart plan, right from within his contact card, right? click select and click start, confirm. And that would start him on the monthly neighborhood nurture. So any questions there? Good? Okay, so briefly, we're gonna go over how you can make your own smart plans. Um, you guys don't have to like stress over making your own smart plans unless you really want to. There are a lot of great ones out there now that are available for you to download, but I do wanna make sure that I cover it with you. So again, I'm moving into my smart plans applet, which is my fourth applet on the left, okay? I'm gonna click create in the upper right corner. Boop. I'm gonna give my smart plan a name. Okay, and click apply. And so mm -hmm, I can now see my smart plan here and ready to go. Okay, so I can choose to create a task, make a call, send an email, send a text. If I'm using Twilio, then it will automatically send the text for me. If I'm not using Twilio, then it will give me a task that says to send the text, okay? I can set a delay between two steps. I can add them to an additional smart plan or I can restart a smart plan. For example, that 555 that we looked at that restarted unlimited times, that was just his touch system for his whole database. Okay, all right, so I'm going to create a task. I just click it, it shows up over here. 
Is it a touch task? It means I, it involves me reaching out to my contact or is it a non-touch task? Which is, is something for me to do. So maybe I wanna make sure, maybe these are the 20 contacts that I added to my command database that do not have a neighborhood. So get home address. Four. And look here, we have these merge fields, which are really nice. I'm going to click this contact first name, contact last name. So when I see the task, it's going to say get home address for Monica Perry, get home address for Nisi Davis, right? And then I just need to give it a description missing home address, get it added. To command. All right. So there's my task. Then I can make a call and say call contact first name, contact last name at contacts phone number. Ask, like, have a conversation. You could pop the conversation starter in here or the script, if you will, if you have one from your productivity coach or something um, that you read somewhere, or maybe you're in bold and you have a conversation starter or a script that you want to use. You could, by all means, pop that down here in the task description. Um, so I could say, you know, hi, contact first name. This is Monica with KW Elite. I hope you and your family are doing well. Blah, 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 and etc. And I could type my whole script in here because one of the best things that you can do for yourself is when you're making your lead generation calls is to be doing it from command so that you can take really great notes so that the next time that you have a conversation with them, you can pick up right where you dropped off the last time, right? So I can say, have that conversation here. So my goal is to get their address. I'm reminding myself to make a call to get it, or I could choose to send a text instead of the call, right? Or if I decide, mm, I don't really wanna text this, I can click the X and delete that step and confirm the removing of that step. I could send them an email if I wanted to, right? So I could say, you know, touching base. Hi. And I still have my merge fields, contact, first name. I am so excited to be growing my career with Keller Williams. I can't type when people are watching me, right? And I can move on into, I'm so excited to be growing my career with Keller Williams in an effort to give you the most hyperlocal information possible. I was just wondering if I could get your home address from you, you can type out this email this way. And then, you could set a delay to make sure that you have time to get the data back and get it added. Okay. So say I want to wait three days to make sure I get that address in the system. And then after that delay, I want to go ahead and automatically add them to the smart plan monthly neighborhood nurture. And I went one step further um, and I'm going to show you guys this here in just a second. This smart plan is just the monthly neighborhood nurture, but what they have done is added one step before the monthly neighborhood nurture starts, which is an email, because when the monthly neighborhood nurture starts, they just get that email that says, here's what's happening in your neighborhood, right? And I'm going to open another command window, which also teaches you guys, you can have more than one command window opened at one time, and I quite often do. 
especially if I'm working on multiple things throughout different parts of the day, you by all means can have more than one window open. So when you're searching for smart plans, there are a couple of things that you can do. I have created some smart plans for you guys. Um, one of them is a drip email campaign for the entire year of 2022 that I'm going to get released later this week. Um, I've got a few final details that I'm working out on that. But any of the smart plans that I release, if you're in Winston-Salem, you should be really familiar with the number 994, which is your market center number. So you can search 994 in, oh, helps if I go to the library, my apologies. So you go to the library and you can search 994, which is going to show you the smart plans that I've shared, or you can search 509 if you're in Greensboro, also should be a familiar KW1, that is your market center number 509, and I've tagged everything as such, so you can search 509 and find any smart plans that I publish as well. And that one in particular that we were just looking at, you can also search labs advisors. So we as labs advisors have been asked that when we share smart plans that we think would be really helpful um, that we tag them with labs advisors so that you guys can search by that, okay? So these are labs advisor smart plans that have been published. And one of my favorite ones is the Monthly Neighborhood Nurture by Jessica Borden. So this sends an email first. It says, hey there, this is agent first name, agent last name with Keller Williams. As your local expert, I wanted to share a tool that my clients find valuable, the Monthly Neighborhood Statistics. The data can be set up to show you local data where you live today, and it can also show you where you want to live in the future, right? So it's a nice introductory email. OK, and then it delays a day and then it starts them on that monthly neighborhood nurture smart plan. So I do like that additional step of that intro email. And again, Jessica's smart plan is available in the library. You simply search labs advisors and you will see it pop up right there and you can add it. You don't even have to write the email. It's already written for you. OK, so in this smart plan, I know these 30 contacts don't have an address. So first thing for me is to get the address. So I'm tasking myself to do it. I'm following up with making a phone call to get it done, sending an email to make sure I get it done, and then adding it back within three days and then starting that monthly neighborhood nurture. Okay, so you can see that you can build out smart plans just like you want them. Super long ones, in fact. Um, there are some really great smart plans in there, and I have whole classes on just smart plans that we can go over, okay? So any questions, comments, or concerns that you guys want to bring up today? Okay, did you guys find this helpful? Is it helpful information for you? Give me a little feedback. Guys are so quiet. Yeah. No, this was extremely helpful. I've been on a couple of these, but I, I learned something new every time. That's why I keep coming back. Good, Janet. I'm happy to always have you back. Thank you. Andrea, you are welcome. I'm glad to help. Awesome. So I am going to go ahead and stop this recording for today. So if you're watching the recording, thank you for coming. Tomorrow, we will be going over opportunities, which is a pretty important day. Um, we will show you how to do your transactions in command. Um, I will touch on using DocuSign to facilitate that paperwork as well as dot loop and how we add those signed forms back into command to turn them into our wonderful compliance officers that keep us out of real estate jail. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the recording stopped for today and everybody have a great day.